It's probably no surprise that most streaming services view animation as something less desired than their live-action shows. Besides with shows for preschoolers, for the longest time streaming services rarely added on original animated content. To my delight, that view seems to be changing, with each service racing to get as much original animation on its platform as it can. But specifically I'm talking about adult animation, which is finally expanding as a category and becoming much more than just crude humor. Netflix has Castlevania and a ton of other shows, Hulu has Solar Opposites, Amazon Prime has Undone, HBO Max will have Close Enough, and finally Apple TV Plus is getting some adult animation in the form of Central Park. And this is a very exciting development, as I had no inclination to check out any Apple TV Plus series before this, so I want to give a review. Thankfully, Apple was able to make that happen, and I've seen the first four episodes to give you my thoughts. This early review is actually quite special because it will be one of my first first show that will be airing weekly instead of dropping all at once. The first three episodes of the show will premiere on May 29th, and the following ten will be released once a week. This means I don't know where everything leads, but I still have a lot to say. With all that out of the way, if you enjoyed this review make sure to subscribe and get notifications for the future videos. We have a lot coming out this summer and I cannot wait to talk about it. So what exactly is Central Park, and why does it look like Bob's Burgers? Central Park is an animated musical series that explores the lives of a family of caretakers who are trying to keep this iconic spot the beautiful yet chaotic place it can be. This means protecting it from the short-tempered hotel heiress Bitsy Brondenham, who would prefer the park have condos and a mall. From the advertising of the show, and just immediately taking a glance at it, it's pretty obvious that the show creator, Lauren Bouchard, also made Bob's Burgers. Unlike my review on Solar Opposites where I compared it to Rick and Morty, I cannot confidently compare Central Park to this creator's previous show. Not because they are two completely different shows, but because I've never seen Bob's Burgers. Technically, I did see two episodes which were recommended to me by Deep Cut, so I guess I can say I've seen a tiny bit, although don't get mad if I say something wrong about it. But to be fair, I've only seen four episodes of Central Park, so I practically have gotten equal glimpse at both shows. Still, I'm definitely no expert. But from what I've seen, I think Central Park is so much more interesting than Bob's Burgers for a variety of reasons. First off, the animation is stunning. From the fluidity of the characters' movements to the sheer amount of singing characters they can have on the screen at the same time, I was constantly wowed at what the show was able to pull off. And as I mentioned before, this is an animated musical series, meaning each episode has at least three songs. I cannot even imagine the amount of effort it took to create multiple songs for each episode that pertain to the events of the plot. This means we get songs about being a superhero, catching pesky rats, or pretty much anything else that the main characters find important. With pretty much any other show that frequently has characters singing, a song is a treat that fans savor for a long time, and getting a full musical episode is usually something reserved for a season finale or for a special event. Which means my mind was absolutely blown with each episode, as we got multiple songs, most of which are pretty catchy and feature a wide range of genres. So already, this show is on another league than most. The only way to top this would be to have a show with real stakes that has musical numbers every episode. Not that Saving the Park isn't important, it's just not the most high stakes plot. Fittingly, the very beginning of the show starts off with a huge musical number that explains the setting. While I never got too into musicals, I do know this is how they usually begin. We meet Birdie, who is a busker, which I had to look up, and is a person who performs music or other entertainment in the street or another public place for monetary donations. That does fittingly describe his role, I had no idea there was a word for that. But what's fun about him is that he constantly breaks the fourth wall and seems to know what will happen to our characters throughout the episode even before the events transpire. It was sometimes annoying how he ends up in places he really shouldn't be, but since he is a narrator, I can't complain too much. Also side note, I have pretty much no association with New York and I don't know what it's like to live there, so I didn't immediately have a connection to it. But this is why I found it not only awesome, but also important to learn about the place through the opening song, as it really emphasized why it was such a special location and should be protected. Moving on, we quickly get to know the main family, which is a pretty typical group of um dad, mom, daughter, and son. The father Owen is a park ranger and does his best to keep the park in tip-top shape. Their mother Paige is a reporter trying to get the next big scoop. The daughter Molly loves drawing herself as a superhero and is hopelessly in love with a boy named Brendan. And finally, the son Cole has his own special connection with Bitsy's dog Champagne. I really like these characters. There are parts of each of them that I can relate to and the show takes their struggles really seriously. And overall, the show is a lot more serious than Bob's Burgers, meaning that comedy is much less of a focus. Honestly, don't mind this, as characters I find interesting are something I appreciate a lot more than a funny episode. On the other hand, I cannot say that I'm a big fan of Bitsy or her assistant Helen, who only tolerates Bitsy since she believes she'll inherit her fortune as she passes. I do think this waiting game Helen is playing is pretty amusing, although it comes at the expense of Helen hating her competition, Champagne. Each episode gives all the main characters some spotlight where different situations play out with their job, goal, or evil scheme. 
it quickly becomes clear that Owen and Bitsy are on opposite sides, where Owen tries to convince city officials and rich people to save the park, while Bitsy is trying to persuade them of the money they can make by commercializing it. Paytas remained pretty neutral as a reporter, but she does her best to make her husband's efforts known to the city. Their children are pretty separated from this whole plot, but with Cole's attempts to connect with Champagne, it seems like he and Bitsy will be crossing paths quite a lot. While it's not the most surprising thing that the daughter's plot revolves mainly around getting Brendan's attention, I think it's pretty cute, and all the time she awkwardly messes up is quite entertaining. Helen is the only character right now who hasn't got much screen time, but I can imagine that will change as we get more episodes. But speaking of Helen, this brings me to probably the thing that bugs me the most with the show. Both Bitsy and Helen are voiced by men, which is pretty evident right from the start. This is probably more of a personal nitpick, but I am really not a fan of men voicing women in cartoons, especially if it's in the role of an important character. I will admit that this does not seem too surprising, as this is something the creator has done before with his previous show. And you can say, well, women often voice children in the animation. Yes, that's true, but that is a necessity when you have shows that go on for years, perhaps even a decade or more. And the fact that only 39% of the credited cast on animated series were women, which includes voice actors, I think it's important to let women be represented by women. Also, sometimes I feel that the show takes the whole musical thing a bit too seriously, as the characters will stare straight into the camera for long periods of time. It doesn't translate that well into animation, and with this art style, it's not the most pleasant thing to look at. And while the show does seem to try and mix up things during the musical numbers, where the background will change or the characters will spontaneously change clothes, I feel like they could do so much more since it's animation. I want more like the original Lion King instead of the recent remake. Even outside of songs, it's always a treat when we get a glimpse into the stories Molly creates, where the show takes on a really cute comic book style. Honestly, what's the whole show look like this? Besides those little things that bug me, I'm very excited to see the rest of this show. I cannot wait to see where they take these characters, and most importantly, the fate of the park. Something in stark contrast to the little I've seen of Bob's Burgers is what age range this show would be appropriate for. Bob's Burgers is no doubt for adults, but besides some choice words that parents might not want their children to hear, Central Park could pass as a family show. At least, for now. And I'm definitely a big fan of this. I've never been one for crude humor, so the less that the shows have of this, the better. Of course, if that's your thing, you could find Central Park dull. Or if you just don't like musicals, this is probably not the show for you. But for everyone else, I'd say check out the first few episodes that drop. If you have Apple TV, that is. I hope this service gets more animated shows soon, because if you join new services almost exclusively for animation, as I have, then it's really hard to justify getting an entire new service for one show. And those are all my thoughts about Central Park. As always, if you decide to check out the show, let me know what you thought. Also check out my review for Solar Opposites, and since Tuca and Birdie is now coming back, that is a must watch review as well. Many thanks to my patrons who help support the channel. I posted the script for this video early there, which I plan to do with other early reviews in the future. Have an animated day!